Hi, and welcome to week three of Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life. So this week in class, we started the evening out with kind of a reflection on the positive evidence, things that people saw in their lives have changed since last week when we had class last week. And in this situation, a number of people said that they noticed changes in not only their energy, but also in the response that they were getting from other people, which I think is a significant finding, if you will, or awareness when we notice that other people are responding to us differently. That means our vibe, the vibration that we're putting out into the world is changing and causing them to interact with us differently. And that is so, so, so valuable. Um, so that's something to be aware of. Pay attention to when things are going your way or things just show up without asking, but you were just thinking about them. Or maybe you have a friend call you and you go, wow, I was just thinking about that or thinking about that person. And those kinds of things are indications, what we call positive evidence that things are working, especially in your favor. Like we said, when you change your vibe, everything else changes, right? Okay. So we also checked in with everyone to find out what had changed since they, we had cleared procrastination. And one of the team members said that she had this list of items that she'd been putting off and putting off and making excuses about not taking care of. And she got all of it done and it took all of 20 minutes. So what does that tell you? <laughs> Sometimes we have procrastination for not very good reasons and we can get things done very, very quickly, much faster than we ever thought we could when we clear away the energy of procrastination. So you can always use EFT to get rid of that procrastination. Even if you don't really know what's going on, you can just tap. Even though I have this procrastination, I really don't want to do this or that, X, Y, Z, whatever the thing is, I love and accept myself anyway. And you repeat that three times. And then you talk about the thing that you're procrastinating about and tap on all the individual spots. And in doing that, you release the resistance, the energy that was holding you back and keeping you from taking action on the item that you needed to get done or actions. If, let's say there was a number of things you needed to get done. So procrastination is really quite easy to get rid of when you recognize that you've got it. So that's the key is recognizing it. So um, I w shared a story about law of attraction, if you will, and how it's worked in my life. Because this week we're talking a, a lot about financial stability, financial abundance, financial um, insecurity, any way you wanna look at finances, we were kind of talking about it. And so what I noticed is when you're in, and I know this consciously, and I know this energetically, but I, I hadn't seen it so clearly play out as it did this past weekend. When I was in Vegas and we, my husband and I were playing slot machines and I noticed that my old energy about being in Vegas is I'm there to lose money gambling. And I'm like, uh, well, of course, what's gonna happen? I'm gonna lose money gambling. However, I decided to take a different approach and I was going to make it a game. And so instead of noticing, once you put your money in, right, in the slot machine and you start running the reels, the money, your credits go down. But what I started to do was calculating the number of times I hit something and it was paying off. And so I might get a dollar here, I might get $5 there, I might get another $10 there, but I quit looking at the credits. And of course they were piling up and then coming down and come back up again. And I created so much positive energy and joy that it was so much fun. And so eventually things weren't going, you know, like I was kind of getting tired of that game. And so I decided they weren't really going in a fun way. They kind of lulled for a little bit as they always do, or at least that's my belief. And I, my energy kind of waned a little bit and I started losing credits and I thought I'm going to cash out. So I cashed out and I went over to another machine that was a craps table machine instead of the standard craps table where you have the, the uh, dealers around the table 
and individual people throw the dice, it was a kiosk situation, and I could bet as fast or as slow as I wanted to, which was great. It gave me time to think it through. There's a lot of numbers and wagers and things like that involved in craps. And then when I was ready, I could push the button and it would roll the dice, one set of dice right in front of me. And nobody else, I wasn't playing against anyone else. That game got to be so much fun. Marvin was playing it too. We were sitting near each other or next to each other and we were high-fiving because we were both winning. It, it, it was a hoot. It was such a hoot. And the energy and the vibe was so high. There was so much joy and so much delight that the numbers kept going up and going up and going up. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so great. And I'd kind of catch myself and go, oh no. And, you know, and I noticed as soon as that vibration dropped, I quit hitting my numbers. And that meant I quit earning money. And I was like, dang. And so I'd like get, hurry it up and try to find a way back to that joyful, delightful feeling. And sure enough, if I didn't start hitting my numbers again, not only was I hitting them, I was intuitively getting what the next number was going to be. And I love that game. That was so much fun. <laughs> anyway, ultimately I came home with some extra cash and I thought, wow, if this is how it can work with a, a, you know, a digital machine, you know, think about how that applies to life. And if I made life more of a game and made it more playful and being in delight and joy when I'm doing things, whether it be marketing or, or coaching or speaking or whatever, and not take myself so seriously, then I would bring more of that delight and joy and reward to me. And I was like, wow, what would happen if my clients, the participants in my class, were having more joy and delight and playing life like a game. What would happen for you? And I don't mean that you don't take it seriously. I just mean that you take it more lightheartedly and you don't take things to, to heart when if people are grumpy, that's on them, that's not on you. And, and you play, you're more playful and fun. And I think it can make a huge difference in the success of all of our businesses, no matter what industry we're in. So give that some thought and consider playing life like a game instead of so seriously. The next item that was on our list was to talk about the Palace of Possibilities. And you remember that the Palace of Possibilities, that we all live in a palace and it has many, many rooms. And very often we won't go into rooms because we have written on the walls or on the door that says, do not enter, you don't deserve to go here, or you're not knowledgeable enough to go into this room, or this is way before your time, you shouldn't be here. It could be any number of types of sayings that we have on those walls, but it keeps us out of experiencing that room within our palace. And our palace was built for us to experience the, the greatness that's possible for us. But we put limitations on it by the language and the words that we use on those walls. We're calling them walls, but on those rooms and those doors. So. As you recall, the, the original assignment was to write down the things that you wanted in the left-hand column of your journal. And, on the, and we were supposed to write those as affirmations. And then on the right-hand column, we were to write those, we were writing over there, the reasons why we can't have it. The things or the reasons why it hasn't happened yet. And we're right, and we call those tail enders. And so those are just bullet points that are in, uh, in alignment with the thing that we want, the thing that's not come to fruition yet. And so I ask you to do that so that we would know what we needed to tap on, what you needed to tap on to move through that section so you can move into that room within your palace. So we looked at, um, our, our example was, to, let me see if I can remember exactly. Um, it was around money. And so I said, I made it very personal and direct. And I said, my personal income is $50,000 per month. That's $600,000 per year. And that sounds like a lot of money to a lot of people. And some, some people probably does sound like enough. It depends on what industry you're in, I guess. 
but the truth of the matter is, is it was, it was a trigger or a, um, it was something everyone wanted that was in the group. And it was also something that many people had holdups with. In the right hand column, we wrote down, it's impossible for me to earn $50,000 a year. And before we did any tapping on it, I went around the room and asked each person for their permission to check for them to see how true that first statement was, which was, uh, my personal income is $50,000 per month or $600,000 a year. I muscle tested to find out, was it 0% true, 100% true? Um, and most people were in the 10 to 25%. 25 was the highest. So we were looking for an improvement in terms of percentage of alignment that I earn or my personal income is $50,000 per year. So then what we did was we took the tail ender of it's impossible for me to earn $50,000 a year and we tapped on it. And so the tapping went like this, okay? And you might wanna tap along with me so that you can clear any kind of disbelief or um, resistance to earning $50,000 a year because who knows what's possible for you, all right? So why not clear it out and make, make room for it, all right? So if you'll start tapping with me on the side of your hand and repeat after me. Even though it's impossible for me to earn $50,000 per month, I love and accept myself just the way I am. Even though it's incredibly crazy for me to think that I could earn $50,000 a year, oh, excuse me, $50,000 a month, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. One more time. Even though it's virtually impossible impossible for me to earn $50,000 a month. I love and accept myself just the way I am. Okay, inner eyebrow. Cheryl must be nuts. I can't earn $50,000 a year. Um, I said it again, $50,000 a month. <laughs> Side of the eye. I, it's impossible for me to earn $50,000 a month. I'd have to, under the eye, I'd have to sell my soul and my body and everything I own to receive $50,000 per month. Under the nose, it's crazy to think that I could earn $50,000 a month. Chin, there is no way, I can't even imagine what I might do to get $50,000 per month. Collarbone, $50,000 a month, that's, that's amazing. Only really wealthy people who have lots of investments under the arm can earn $50,000 a month. There's no way I can earn $50,000 per month, but I'm open to trying. Take two deep breaths. Well, apparently I need to do some tapping around $50,000 a year because I keep getting hung up on that. <laughs> I don't know what that's all about. But anyway, $50,000 a month sounds like an awful lot of money, but it may not be for many people. In fact, it's not for a good, a good a portion of the industry, of the world, I should say, of the working world. And what I want to encourage you to do is to practice clearing whatever thoughts came up for you. I just made those up. And so that you can clear the things that come up for you, like I'm not worthy of $50,000 a month. I don't know where $50,000 a month would come from. You know, I'd have to sell my firstborn child, but I still wouldn't get $50,000 a month. But, you know, they'd return him. No, I'm kidding. They wouldn't. But, um... <laughs> But the thing is, is that we have lots of tail enders around money and that gets in our way. And if we can clear out the tail enders, there's no telling where the money might come from. So practice this clearing and use your own words. And then over the next week, pay attention to what is the positive evidence that's showing up in your life. Did you get a rebate from like, uh, maybe a, a insurance company or, or maybe you got a, uh, a coupon or maybe you got, um, you found a quarter in the parking lot or a dollar or 20 bucks in a cab or whatever it may be. 
That happened to me once. I found 20 bucks in a cab. But um, the thing is, is that you want to clear the negativity, the resistance around receiving money so that more money can flow to you. It doesn't have to come in one form. It can come in many forms. You just have to be open to it. And when you have resistance, resistance closes down all of the avenues in which it can come to you. Okay? Make sense so far? I hope so. Okay. So after we tapped on it, we then retested everyone to see if what their alignment and how true that statement, the original statement was, um, I, I personal, my personal income is $50,000 per month. Everyone in the room was at 100% in alignment with that statement which means that the doors are open wide to them receiving. So let's talk about the process. Let's redefine it for you one more time so you know what we did and how we went about it. So first of all, we identified what our, our wants were and we wrote those wants on the left-hand side of our T-chart, if you will, within our journal. And we identified our wants and we put them in an affirmation statement. And it's important that you're really clear in your affirmation statement so it's, it's strong, it's clear, and it's focused. You know, like when I, I started out with a different statement before I shifted it to my personal income is. Because you could say, well, my, if you own a business, you could say, well, my business income is $50,000 per month. But that doesn't mean, you know, that you're taking home 50000 It means it's maybe 50000 coming into the, to the organization or the company, but then you've got a lot of expenses. So what we're looking at is ch making that, that language so clear that it's really hard to argue with, right? So it's, there, the universe has no misunderstanding about what it is that you're asking for, all right? So that's the first thing, write down our wants and set it up as an affirmation. The second thing was we measured it to see what the, the congruency was. Um, how congruent are we with that thing? And so we used, I use muscle testing. You can use the sway test. And I think we've talked about the sway test before where you stand up with your feet fairly close together and maybe separated two or three inches, if that, probably closer to two inches. And you close your eyes and your arms are down by your side and you relax and you say, show me a yes. And then you will sway in one direction or another. You may sway to the left or the right or forward and back, but that will be the indication of your yes answer. So that is your body telling you what is an alignment. Then you open your eyes, get your bearings, close your eyes again and say, show me a no. And very often you will almost always sway in a different direction and that will be your no. So that you can ans ask yourselves yes or no questions to find out how in, in alignment you are. Am I in, li in alignment with this statement? I, my personal income is, is $50,000 a month. If you're not, then okay, you don't have to know the percentage per se, that's just how I did it last night. And you can, you'll be able to find out and track when you're more in alignment, okay? Then we wrote down our tail enders and the things that keep us from having what we want, whether it be in our own minds or external to ourselves, we write those down and those are the things we use EFT for and we tap on each of them, okay, independently. And then we test again and figure out, are we in alignment with the original statement? My personal income is $50,000 per month. Then we've got a better idea of where we are in terms of alignment. We must be in alignment with the statement for it to manifest in our lives. Make sense? Good. Okay, and then you look for positive evidence. You watch things going on in your world and pay attention to it and plan to report back at our next meeting because I'm curious to know what you manifested for yourself. I think it's so exciting to hear everybody's stories so much fun to see the transformation that's taking place. And if you're not paying attention, you might miss it. So you got to stay alert and alive and paying attention. Okay. So practice that with your tail enders from your palace of possibilities. And the more you practice it, the more you're going to get a positive result. It doesn't just have to be about financial scarcity or financial abundance. It doesn't have to do with finances at all. It could be, um, you want to lose weight or it could be um, you want to buy a new car. 
and you may have some holdups and resistance around buying a new car. So use whatever it is that you want, look at the tail enders, clear the tail enders, and I know that you're gonna get a positive result. Good things are gonna come, absolutely. And let me know what they are, because I love hearing about it, okay? All right, as we started closing up the, the session, we tapped on, well, we didn't tap on, but we did individual clearing sessions for financial scarcity for everyone in the group and cleared individual um, trapped emotions that were coming up that was holding them back from receiving greater abundance or causing, contributing to scarcity, the idea of financial scarcity. And everyone felt lifted up and lighter and more positive after, after we cleared those emotions. So let's see, what else? So the other only things, the only other things you need to know about are that this is session, this was session three. Next week, we're going to talk about the common blocks. We're going to be clearing and talking about the common blocks to uh, abundance and success. So next week will be a really good session as well. So you won't want to miss it. And I hope you'll be here. And um, yeah, be sure to, you know, if, if you want to text me in the midst of uh, noticing something cool happening or in alignment with what you've asked for, something manifesting in your life, and you want to share that, please feel free to text me or email me. I'd love to hear about it. All right. Until we see each other next week. Take care. Bye-bye.